Today in Bachelor Nation recap, we are talking about the new photos that ABC just released of the first look of Gary Turner as the Golden Bachelor, as well as Katie Thurston talking about the differences between Bachelor Nation franchise and F-Boy Island. Hey everyone, this is Eva Berry and welcome back to Shared News. Today we will be discussing many of the latest headlines in Bachelor Nation and helping me to do that today is Kayla Thompson. But before we begin, please make sure to like this video subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any news updates. So once again, like I said, we're going to be talking about a lot of the newest headlines in Bachelor Nation, but let's kick it off with, of course, The Golden Bachelor. ABC released some new pictures of the season where we see Gary mingling and meeting the contestants. Executive producer Jason Elric told Entertainment Weekly, quote, as we've traveled and been through airports or just restaurants, people are not just recognizing him, but rooting for him. They're like, I hope you find your person. People are really excited for him, end quote. Showrunner Bennett Grabner said, quote, when we announced that we were doing the show, so many viewers were speculating about who this guy would be, and they thought it was going to be some 40-something silver fox. It was never going to be that person. We felt it was important to choose someone who we really felt like a golden bachelor, not one of our bachelors who had aged just 10 years, end quote. So... I mean, it seems like Gary is getting a lot of media attention, especially just even in his daily life, people supporting him, really excited for this season. Kayla, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a surprise to me that he's getting as much, you know, fame and attention already that he's getting, just not because he's he's a great guy. Obviously, he seems like a really amazing guy. But I just didn't expect people to be so into the spinoff already before it even began. So I think it's, you know, a good sign that there is a lot of, you know, attention drawn to it already. People are going to be tuning in. So I'm hoping that it will live up to, I guess, the hype that is starting to build amongst Bachelor Nation. But I think that Bachelor Nation needed something new. They needed something different um, just to kind of like shake things up, get something fresh. So this is it. So I'm excited, actually. I'm really excited to see how his season goes, how it's going to be different. I'm very intrigued. There is a lot of hype, so I really hope they're able to deliver. And I know a lot of people are expecting a lot of, you know, hopefully shocking things, surprising, just entertainment. Uh, so hopefully they deliver. I feel like that is the bottom line is they give what the people want. And like I had mentioned, mm. ABC just released new pictures and we're going to go and take the behind the scenes look at each of those pictures. And up first, we have one of the contestants that is just seems like came from the limo entrance limo drop off. And she is being greeted by, of course, our golden bachelor, Gary. Uh, so it's going to be interesting because I am so curious about the styling, how these women are going to be dressed, how their hair, makeup, mm -hmm. outfits are all going to look compared to the previous seasons of those younger aged contestants. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's going to be really wholesome. I feel like the whole season is going to be pretty wholesome. So I, I feel like I'm going to also be very nervous for these contestants when it comes to night one, you know, all of those nerves and meeting everybody for the first time. Mm -hmm. And of course, meeting Gary for the first time. Uh, but I feel like it's just going to be lots of smiles and just wholesome yeah. moments. <laughs> what do you think? It's definitely exciting that they already released these photos with their names already. We've got, like you said, we have the first woman. I'm guessing this is Edith. And it seems like they're just doing it just like a regular season of The Bachelor. I mean... She's coming out. She looks gorgeous. I think that we'll definitely be seeing all of them just really elegant and really classy. Um, I think that people are going to have a lot of confidence. I think, you know, contrary to what people might think, they're going to be super confident in themselves because they're older. They know themselves. They're putting themselves mm -hmm. out there again. And I think we're going to see a lot of deep conversations. Um, there's going to be less women, so he'll have more time to get to know, you know, all, I think there's about 20 of them. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how they do it differently though, because like I said, it seems like it's just the classic, 
formula of a bachelor season, a bachelor premiere where he's standing there, Jesse Palmer's there, the women come out of the limo, they have, you know, their first um, impression. But I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more different than just a stock, like, you know what I mean? First night of The Bachelor, but it's just people in their golden years. So I was hoping that there would be something a little different, but, you know, it'll still be cute. I'm, I'm still intrigued. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be, like you said, just much more quality conversation because they are in their later years of life. So I think we're going to get a different type of conversation that we're mo- usually used to when it comes to the previous seasons. All right, up next, we have the next picture that ABC had just released, and it is a picture of Marina greeting Gary, of course, at the limo drop-off. And I think Marina was one of the contestants that was one that I was looking out for. I had my eye on her, and uh, Mm -hmm. she had Mm -hmm. some... I think she was the one that didn't like waiting in lines. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember precisely, but she had a personality to her, and she was someone that I was like, hmm... Gotta keep my eye eye on her. Um, But I love that she, of course, has a great smile and she's meeting him. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard because, you know, pictures, they don't have much for us to work with. I wish we got some sort of a clip, like you had also mentioned, Kayla. But um, we're just going to have to give our best guesses. Uh, But, I mean, these smiles are just really convincing me that this is going to be tough. I feel like he's going to have a hard time maybe. (laughs) He's going to have a hard time. Yeah. Yeah, especially when it comes to the first row ceremony, because he's never done this before, ever. So he Mm, might be attached to some or might not. So it's going to be interesting to see his thought process and how he'll eliminate women and based off of kind of what criteria. Because, you know, we Mm -hmm. usually in the past Bachelor contestants, there's just no physical attraction, maybe emotional, maybe with some relatability. So it'll be interesting again to see how Gary kind of narrows down yeah his final pick yeah i think that because he's probably not a bachelor fan himself i wouldn't peg him down as someone who watches season upon season of the show he's gonna just do his own thing i think he's gonna be more of himself and i think he's gonna be super genuine and yeah he's gonna go with his gut um and i think obviously you know, they've been around, they're wise, like he knows what he wants, he knows what he doesn't want. Um, And so I think that actually will, that'll be a really different thing to watch for a bachelor, because usually the bachelor, it's like, (laughs) oh, in other seasons of the bachelor, all the drama and all the messages circling around the bachelor, and they're just like trying to figure out what the heck they're doing. Whereas I think he'll really hold the reins on this journey for himself. Um, and he'll have no other thing to kind of compare it to, if that makes sense. So that's my take on it. But yeah, Marina is gorgeous. I love that she's dressed in like a traditional like dress. I'm not sure what her ethnicity is exactly or what like her, her culture is exactly. So I'm curious. It looks like an Indian dress. I was going to, I was going to guess that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's what, that was my guess as well. But yeah, definitely interested to, to get to know her more because we usually don't get that kind of diversity on this franchise. So I wasn't expecting it in in the golden bachelor. I'm not going to lie. So um, I'm really, really happy that they, that they casted someone like her and to hear that she has such a great personality. Hopefully she sticks around and um, brings, you know, this more to the season. And yeah, I'm actually, as we're talking about, I'm seeing the photos. I'm like, okay, I'm getting more excited. I have said in the past. Yeah. I don't know about this Golden Bachelor thing. I feel like they're just trying <laughs> random stuff. But you know what? I'm I'm with it now. I think it's I think this actually could be really cute. This could be cool to watch. Looks very promising. I agree. All right. Up next we have Natasha. This is gonna be the next picture that we will be reacting to. Now this is a picture of Natasha on the ground. It seems like they are on <laughs> yoga mats and her just hanging out with Gary. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure maybe the context of this, but we can take a guess. I don't know or remember if Natasha is into maybe yoga or physical activity as far as working out. So maybe she wanted to have fun and be different Mm. when it came to the limo Mm. drop-offs and do something Mm -hmm. quirky and Mm -hmm. fun to stick out to Gary. Uh, but I mean, based on the body language, (laughs) it, it seems like they're having fun. She's laughing and he's 
kind of leaning away a little bit, actually. So I don't know about that. Maybe he's a little They're thrown off. They're probably both just laughing at something, you know? They're both just possibly. in the moment. Yeah. It just seems like they're having a fun time. Once again, that wholesome moment, that wholesome content we all love and want, you guys. Mm. Um, and I do, I think I remember she was a life coach. So she was kind of helping with people okay. in their later years of life when it came to coaching them and motivating them and giving them words of encouragement. So basically like a later day in your life influencer, it seems like influencer adjacent. (laughs) So I think Mm. she'll be very, what I assume, nurturing, caring, a good listener, uh, and maybe a side Mm. of fun like we're seeing in this photo. So uh, that'll be an interesting dynamic. I feel like we'll we'll have to watch unfold. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I, the first thought (laughs) I have when I see this photo is they're probably stretching or something (laughs) like they're like, listen, (laughs) We, as you keep getting hard. older, you need to make sure you are, yes, you need to make sure you are nimble. You need to make sure your joints are stretching. Your, listen, you got to stretch <laughs> yourself out. So that's probably what they're doing. Um, but she seems like a really fun time. It seems like obviously they're both laughing. Okay. So I'm expecting for her to bring humor. I'm expecting for him to also, it seems like he's just really just going with the flow and just really open and loose and having fun. And I love to see that. I I'm excited to see it. I'm already seeing like, okay, we're getting a lot of different kinds of people. So like I said, it's, this is making me a lot more in, interested and invested in night one of this, this season. Okay. Slowly, but surely. And it is important <laughs> that the lead is very open-minded, especially with people from different backgrounds, you know, places in the country that they're from, uh, work, employment, Mm -hmm. the way they've lived their lives. So it seems like Gary really kind of hit the nail on the head when it came to those requirements. He just seems like a very open, fun-loving guy. So it'll be a fun journey, I I think, uh, to watch him kind of find and dwindle down his way into hopefully finding his next love. And now the final picture that we have is a picture of the women the entire cast of women on the couch after meeting gary we have seen this shot time and time again with previous seasons of the bachelor bachelorette etc and this is i believe the first time they're all getting the first look at each other themselves all decked out glitz and the glamour with the dresses Mm -hmm. and it seems like they're just hanging Mm -hmm. out waiting for gary to come by and maybe give his official hello and welcome to everybody to the mansion um again amazing dresses that I'm seeing just the styling I feel like it's gonna be top tier this season just a wide prediction for me what do, what are your thoughts Kayla <laughs> yeah this is so cute I'm like okay this is really like an actual season of The Bachelor we got <laughs> yes. all of them there they look so beautiful they're all wearing gorgeous gowns and different kind I think I see one mm-hmm. woman wearing like more of like a track suit it seems like do you see her like on the far right um, I saw so, that too. I mean, I'm that kind of threw me what off. That's yeah. about. That could be fun. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Who knows? And now I'm actually, now that we're looking at the entire group, I'm trying to find Matt James' mom. I'm trying to find Patty, but I don't see her. Maybe she's tucked away on the left somewhere. But I think she's in the left. You see a little bit of her hair. Night one. Okay, yeah. The short hair. I think that is her next mm-hmm. to um, the black woman. Okay, yeah. Yeah. No, okay. This is this is cute. I'm I'm excited about this. I it looks like they're all uh, clapping for him, applauding while he comes in. Maybe like, um, mm. you see how they're all looking in the same direction. Um, right, right. So maybe this is like right before he gives his, you know, night one post. So, yeah, this is cute. Okay, this is cute. I feel like, Kayla, we're starting to get your wheels turning. I think you're opening yeah. up to this season. <laughs> right. I am. I'm like, okay. Yeah. The final prediction is this is cute. That's my final thought for this. Okay. It's going to be cute. <laughs> we'll take it. We will take it's cute. Okay. Yeah. Um, but moving on, when it comes to the golden bachelor, of course, there's also this mysterious gold rose that will be on display mm. at the golden bachelor mansion. But it's still a mystery in the sense that we don't know if Gary will hand it out um, as far as it being the normal rose, as far as, you know, being the daily or weekly gold rose in the rose ceremony, because in the past, of course, it's just a normal red rose. But maybe to go with the theme, they're just going to change it into a gold rose Um, or he Mm. might save it as the last final final rose. That's a huge mystery, kind of a teaser that we've been seeing. 
it's kind of giving us Beauty and the Beast vibes mm. of like, oh, this is a sacred is. gold rose and it's being in this <laughs> yes. glass container. You can't touch it until it's for the one. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's going to be just a cute prop or if they're actually going to be using it and giving it out to the women. What do you what do you think it is? Well, it looks to me, it looks pretty stiff. It looks like it's like a it doesn't look like a real actual rose. It looks like some sort of. Yeah, it looks like it's made out of like. Titanium or glass or something else, you know what I mean? So I don't think that's going to be something mm -hmm. and it's under a glass case. So um, yeah. I feel like it maybe is could it could be as far as just decoration. Or, yeah, maybe it is the kind of last and final golden rose that, you know, they'll be just presented with whoever he picks at the end. I'm not sure. Or it could be, who knows, it could be some kind of like, you know, uh, one of those hidden immunity things like in Survivor. You know what I mean? <laughs> the, he, the hidden <laughs> immunity idol in Survivor it might be like, if you get yeah. the golden rose, you can stay until like the final four or something. Who knows? I guess mm. we're just going to have to watch to night one to see what what it's all about but it is fascinating and it does yeah. give beauty and the beast vibes it, it does and now that you kind of mentioned immunity it could also possibly be a rose to bring someone back that maybe he judged too Ooh. quickly and regretted sending I home like that. I or like maybe that. bachelor nation is just dramatic and just wants a fancy prop or yeah. something i feel like it's black and white there's no really gray it area be, so yeah yeah <laughs> We will we could will have to stay tuned for the meaning of that. Correct. Exactly. Could be anything and everything under the sun. All right. Now, though, production is over. Gary says he is still sleep deprived. He said, quote, it seems like every time it looks like I'm going to get a long, good, solid night of sleep. Something happens. An old friend calls. A group of mm. friends wants to talk longer. A hundred different things. I'll get there. But I'd really rather go a little skimpy on the sleep and enjoy every moment right now. I do realize that my 15 minutes of fame will be over shortly and I'll want to enjoy as much as I can. End quote just a wholesome guy i i think he really guy. is gonna be present during this whole journey and even post journey mm. obviously we don't know what happened yet but he still seems like he wants to be present he wants mm -hmm. to ride the wave take a day at a time be curious of how us people in the public will react once the show starts airing uh so he's just i have good hopes yeah. for him i i think this is gonna be a good season so i hope it all it all works out what do you think, Kayla? I feel like I you're coming around finally, out for though. Him too. <laughs> I am coming around. And it was nothing, you know, it was just to, it was never anything against Gary. I just, you know, with Bachelor, <laughs> yes. I'm like, what are y'all doing now? What's going on now? But now I'm like, it got old. You know what? I hear you. They, they've really got me, it, they got me invested with him. You know, I, this, just his story of how he lost his wife and just how he wants to find love again. It's really sweet. And mm -hmm. I really hope it works. I really hope he finds someone and that they stay together because if, if it's, a, you know, if it's the bachelor curse that comes on to him where he just break every single pe person just breaks up. I don't want that for him. I hope that he stays with whoever he chooses at the end and they really are happy together. Um, but yeah, he seems like such a genuine guy. Like you said, super present, just embracing the entire journey that is doing one of these shows. Um, and he seems so humble, too. Just the fact that he said, oh, my 15 minutes of fame, you know. It's yeah. nothing. I'm just going to ride the wave as it's going and <laughs> just live my little life afterwards. I love that for him. He seems really sweet. He's got great self-awareness. I love that about him. Yeah. <laughs> and once again, The Golden Bachelor premieres Thursday, September 28th on ABC. Lots of premieres heading out in the end of September. So make sure you guys are marking your calendars and staying on top of all of those premiere dates that are coming up. And we're going to continue on the Golden Bachelor theme here a little bit. Now, we just talked about Ma Matt James's mother being one of the contestants. Mm. And we now hear from his bestie, Tyler Cameron, who is reacting to Matt's mom <laughs> being, of course, one of the golden contestants on this season of The Golden Bachelor. He told E! News, quote, I'm excited to see it. I want them to keep it clean. I don't want to see anyone fighting over denture paste. Keep it clean. Miss Patty James is on there. She's been looking real good lately. Gary, I don't think he can handle Miss Patty James. We'll see. End quote. And funny enough, Tyler says he found out the same time we all did about Matt's mom 
joining the show. So he was along for the ride just like we were, and he had absolutely no idea. So I think that's kind of funny, a little secret that mm-hmm. Matt kept from him, mm-hmm. just to maybe, you know, throw in a little bit of a shock value for Tyler. And it seems like they're all very close, you know, Tyler and Matt, especially with Matt's mom, them two being close alone so i think it was it was a fun little treat for all of us to also see as the viewers just you know a little surprise thrown into the trailer and the final reveal of when the contestants were revealed to all of us in the public so i think that was a nice little move and you know tyler is just a jokester so it's funny when he's saying that um you know she's looking good these days (laughs) what do you think Kayla? right he's funny you know what this actually has got me thinking something completely different, but let me just save it. Um, I'll just respond to, you know, it's he's he's a sweet guy. Tyler's Tyler's really nice. He's a nice guy, funny. I loved his take. Um, but it it's interesting that he didn't know. Like I would as, I would assume that he would know, and I think that's actually a sign that maybe him and Matt really have gotten some distance from each other. Um, I know we Ooh, heard okay. like months and months back that like you know he's just in a different place matt is in a different place in his life him and rachel and you know there's been a little tension not tension really like anything too crazy tension between um tyler and rachel but it hasn't always been smooth sailing between the three of them so the fact that he had no idea he found out when everyone else found out that patty was going to be on and then on top of like to be honest like tyler didn't have anything really of super substance to say it just seemed like he just was really distant from it and kind of like made it light and which of course it's there's nothing wrong with that but that just was a sign to me that I you know not trying to say that him and Matt aren't friends anymore at all but that they're probably not as close as they used to be but it's sweet that he did comment on it and I hope she does I hope she does do well and I think he's right she's she definitely gives a little like she's not gonna She's not just she's she's going to be feisty a little bit. I feel like she's going to have a little bite to her. So, but yeah, I said a lot with that take. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like also with her son being, of course, on The Bachelor, she has some sort of idea of what she can expect, things to do, things not to do. And that is an interesting point, though, that maybe they did have some sort of, you know, they're in different points in their lives and they might have some distance come between them. So they probably don't talk as much anymore but are maybe Mm. a little bit less social but not as close as they used to be uh so that that's an interesting point i didn't even know that so that kind of makes a little bit more sense of maybe why tyler didn't know and just yeah had more of a generic reaction uh but yes we will Mm -hmm. have to stay tuned to see how long uh matt's mom goes and how far she goes into this season that's going to be one we'll also for sure have to watch out for and keep our eye on And now we will be switching gears to Bachelor in Paradise, of course, another Bachelor Nation franchise. And host Jesse Palmer is promising and teasing some unique twists for season nine. Once again, season nine starts airing once again on September 28th. And the host says, quote, there's going to be something really special and unique about this season, something to celebrate. I think all of Bachelor Nation is going to be really, really excited about it. Everybody on the beach will be too. I really cannot wait to see what happens and where this goes. Now, on the flip side, Bachelor in Paradise Mm. bartender Wells Adams also said, quote, I don't want to spoil things for everybody. I imagine there will be things that people were not expecting to happen, and they will probably be very angry about it. But I'll be fine because I'll be Mm. making drinks in the back and just watching the dumpster fire burn in front of me and quote okay so it seems like there's going to be some changes clearly this season of mm-hmm. bachelor in paradise and a teased mm-hmm. new feature of the show was revealed in the trailer which is known as the truth box the details are still very vague but one of the cast members predicted that it would quote definitely destroy some couples and quote Kayla, what do you think of this? Okay. What do you think this truth box could be? We listen, we we tried to kind of speculate what the truth box could be in the past on on one of, one of our panels and I mean, we we kind of felt like okay, maybe it's just I I feel like it's just a chance for for the contestants to write whatever they want in the box. 
And honestly, whether or not production actually sticks to what's in the box or they make up something and put it in the box and and really manipulate the situation, who knows? But I doubt that it's going to be something that has like real structure, if that makes sense, to like how the week will go. I feel like it's just a random thing that they're just kind of like lacing there for one night to just see what happens to just cause drama, which is a little like, it's a little frustrating for me. I don't know. Okay, this whole, everything that they said in this in this entire um, article, I guess, is just, I don't really get what's going on with Bachelor in Paradise. Like, the, it's going to upset people and, you know, it's going to make people angry. I don't want to be angry when I'm watching the show. I want to have a good time. Like, I feel like that's one of my problems with Bachelor in Paradise is that sometimes there's just too much the entertainment is too much out of like torturing the cast. And I don't think that that's the only way you can make the show interesting. The only way you can make it entertaining and keep the drama going is to just make everything miserable and just make things worse. And where it's just like, that seems to be one of the main ways that they kind of drive production of the show. And I want them to just, try a different approach like I recently watched Love Island and I felt like the ways that they would manipulate situations were 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 less like heavy-handed and a lot more like thought out there were things that they actually placed within the structure of how the competition went if that makes sense like I just I don't know if there's a twist of course I'm curious what it is but I don't want it to be something where it's just like or the women have to go home or I don't know. It's just like, they just want to just torture these people all the time. <laughs> and I'm just like, can they just, can they just be on vacation and have a good, have a good time in Mexico? Why are y'all always trying to just <laughs> ruin their <laughs> whole time? You know what I mean? Yes. So I don't know. That's, that's my honest opinion on everything, but. I still think it, you know, will be a good season either way. We've got Rachel, the whole bachelorette on the beach, dating some of her previous uh, cast of her own season. We've got Blake Moynes back. Like, it should be a good season mm -hmm. either way. But I just need them to stop torturing everybody. And that's, I rest <laughs> my case. And the thing is, with these Bachelor Nation shows, season after season, it gets so repetitive that these producers want to mm -hmm. change it up and just be too extra and do the most and manipulate and yeah. provoke these contestants where it just kind of gets old mm -hmm. and just an eye roll at this point. And it mm -hmm. seems like past audience members have enjoyed more of the natural drama that just comes about these contestants, which I'm sure is inevitable. Yeah. And they're kind of tired of the producer provoked storylines just to trigger people and yes. get a reaction out of them because that's so staged and written and fake. Uh, and that is just annoying, basically. I am one and of those Bachelor. Fans. <laughs> yes, and Bachelor they Nation is known. I am them. <laughs> <laughs> Bachelor Nation is notorious for doing that. You know, very heavily producer-driven rhetorics and manipulation. And he said, she said, all mm -hmm. this. You know, so I just hope they don't overdo it. I mean, maybe throw in things yeah. here and there, but don't make it be the driving force of the storyline. I feel like that is a very big difference because otherwise you're just going to turn off everybody and overdo it mm -hmm. and just it's not a good combo. But again, we will have yeah. to stay tuned. And uh, Jesse still had a lot to say about this new season for season nine. He said, mm -hmm. quote, a ton of possibility and opportunity for real love to blossom here on the beach, end quote. And he surprisingly adds he'll promise to marry a couple on the Mexico beach. And I don't know if you guys remember and if you remember, Kayla, but there is going to be a mm -hmm. wedding and that was teased mm -hmm. in the season nine trailer. I don't know how I feel about yeah. this. And supposedly also Bachelor in Paradise has better um, probabilities of the couples working out, a better track record. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. do you think of Jesse also teasing that for this season? Oh, man. Whenever they <laughs> try to bring this marrying thing back around, I'm just like, I don't get it. I don't get what, like, what they think they're going to, like, what they think they're doing with that. Like me as a fan, you as a fan, like, are you excited about that? Like that doesn't make me like, Oh my God, they're going to marry somebody. I'm going to, 
that makes me be like, you're going to marry somebody? They've only known each other for, uh, each other for three weeks. Like, how are they going to get married? So if it's the cat, if it's two cast members that get married, I'm going to think it's ridiculous and think it's a joke. Or otherwise, I'm just going to be like, it's none of it's not a contestant on the beach. You're marrying some random couple that I'm you're going to hype it up. You're going to make it a big deal. And then when you actually show me, yeah. oh, it's it's these two random people getting married. I'm going to be like, this was so like you just completely kind of, <laughs> you know, like you like you could bait. not confuse me, but. Yes, clickbait. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just like, this was so anticlimactic. Yeah, again, I just don't really get what they want out of this whole ploy of, hey, guys, we're going to marry someone on the beach. Like, last season, they asked Brandon and Serene, you guys want me to marry you? And, of course, Brandon and Serene are like, I mean, we're really in love with each other right now, but no, because I want my family here. I just met her. Like, me getting engaged is already a big ask, okay? Like, now you want me to get married? It's just crazy. And honestly, thank God that they didn't get married because the two broke up and we would have had a bachelor divorce and that would have been horrible. So I just don't, I don't really understand this, like, you know, them trying to get the fans excited over, like, marrying someone. I just don't get it. I think they just, the, the bachelor... Bachelor in Paradise, I really want them to just get more creative about adding some like interesting like games or competitions or something to Paradise other than these really weird, random, like dramatic tools to get us. You, you get what I'm saying to get us excited? Like, I, I'm just like, I don't care about that. I want to watch something yeah. fun and exciting. That doesn't really mean anything to me because I know you're not going to actually marry one of these people I'm looking at right now anyway. <laughs> So stop trying to no trick way. me, Jesse. <laughs> You're not going <laughs> to trick me. I'm tired of it. <laughs> yes, yeah, just an endless clickbait and wanting to get reviews up or viewership. It's like mm-hmm. not really that desperate, but it seems like it. I mean, it is hard it because is. I'm sure I, I'm not I can't speak on the viewers that tune into Paradise versus the Bachelorette, Bachelor and possibly Golden mm-hmm. Bachelor. But I, it's interesting to also hear that they have the best track record because I, I don't know. I'm sure they have more of a different timeline. They mo- know more about each other. Not super certain, but that was really surprising for me to learn because I did yeah. not expect that to happen. Well, yeah, I think the reason why that is is because in Paradise, literally all you're doing is spending all day with these people. Like, whereas on Bachelor, you have film days, film times. I you see. spend more okay. time with your cast of contestants than you do the lead. Whereas on Paradise, you guys wake up, you have breakfast together, you spend all day together, you talk. You, there's really no, there's barely, barely any separation from the person that you're dating. So, um, so that's why usually the, the couples make it longer. So even though it's a shorter amount of film time of like, I think maybe four weeks, the mm-hmm. yeah there's there's more longevity with these relationships so it kind of ends up making <laughs> sometimes there is sometimes there isn't there's it's give or take sometimes. you never know <laughs> mm-hmm. sometimes yeah. but at least there was no divorce so that's a relief um well bachelor in paradise you guys premieres september 28th on abc so we'll have to stay tuned for all the twists and turns that comes with that season of course and that will be season nine Up next, we have a former Bachelorette, Katie Thurston, who will be returning to the new season of F-Boy Island. Katie tells Entertainment Weekly that she no longer watches the Bachelor franchise and never watched F-Boy Island either. She said, quote, it was literally the complete opposite of what I've gone through before. I was pleasantly surprised by how feminist it was, how kind of satirical and comedy focused it was. So I was like, well, why not? This sounds like it's going to be a really fun time. End quote. Katie even compared her time on The Bachelor to her time on F-Boy Island. She said, quote, a lot of the guys were funny, lighthearted, and it was funny. Oftentimes in a show like The Bachelor, that's not the tone, right? You're almost kind of redirected like, okay, guys, like, let's be serious now. Whereas on F-Boy Island, we really got to just have fun and laugh. And that was embraced. I got to sit down and just have uninterrupted, organic, non-produced conversations. 
There's no, mm-hmm. so do you want to get married and have babies? So it was very just like realistic of what it's like to date in real life in my 30s, end quote. She also mentioned how there is a sisterhood element, which was a huge draw to her joining. She said if she doesn't leave with a man or money, she will have sisters. Kind of again, Kayla, like we were talking about with Bachelor in Paradise, she had mentioned she didn't want those produced storylines so it seems like f boy island might be a little bit more real and organic just like the words katie had mentioned uh so what are your thoughts about that yeah i think it's not just about like the show being less produced i think it's more about it being more fun like i've watched Mm -hmm. the first two seasons of f boy island and it really like katie said it's a lot more about the fun the comedy it's satirical they've They, you know, there actually is more, I would say, more produced moments where they film the guys doing like really silly skits that have to do with certain things that they want to edit into the actual episodes. It's it's really fun. It's a really fun take on a dating show, but it still has the serious moments of them actually dating each other. And but yeah, and and of course, the element of who's the F boy, who's the nice guy trying to weed them Mm -hmm. out. It's fun. It's a really fun, fun watch. I'm actually surprised that Katie had never watched it before. I'm trying to like, I'm like, do I really believe her? Cause I'm surprised that like, (laughs) I kind of thought this was something that she would have really wanted to do. Um, coming off of a reality show as like bachelor and seeing something like F boy Island, I would assume it's just so up her alley. I thought she actually kind of reached out and went for it. Um, so I'm curious how she got casted now that I, I'm hearing she's never even seen the show. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I like F Boy Island in general. I, I think it's such a fun show to watch. So I'm definitely going to tune in. You know, Katie, it's, she's makes sense for casting, but also kind of is like a weird casting at the same time, because usually they, they just cast everyone as just kind of uh, no one's really famous. Everyone's just kind of, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So the fact that she's already has a name and, and attached to her and another franchise attached to her is, is interesting. But maybe that was something that they wanted um, to bring more viewers to the show. So, uh, yeah, interesting all around. I think so, too. And I feel like Katie has that type of personality where she's very comedic. You know, she was known as the vibrator girl when we first met her on The Bachelor <laughs> for Matt James's season. So how could we forget that? Yeah. So it seems like this is really up her alley. Kind of surprising her not watching the show. I don't know how that went in the pitch meeting because that wouldn't make me really <laughs> convinced to hire you as one of the hosts. But she has a personality. <laughs> she's likable. Uh, she's pretty mm-hmm. quick and, you know, is... I just feel like a very wholesome also kind of girl next door. I feel like that's really what embodies her as yeah. girl next door is, is a perfect a way to describe her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just very personable, easy to kind of be your friend. So I think this was a good fit, but uh, I think and it's also nice to kind of just still see her on TV, but in a different avenue and, you know, still mm-hmm. kind of riding the wave of her coming off of the bachelor, the bachelorette. So Hopefully all good things for her and the show does well. And I do like the concept because it is different and it's a little bit more quirky and fun and not as like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, like girls versus girls against getting the guys just very, it's very light and just an easy watch and not so dramatic and produced, heavily produced, you know? So sometimes there's better shows with just simplicity. mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, the thing about The Bachelor is there's so much, I was going to say this earlier about Paradise. I think The Bachelor producers they want to have so much control. Whereas a lot of these, I think the beauty in in a lot of the other reality love dating shows is that they kind of relinquish a lot of the control and just let the cast naturally just make the drama. You know what I mean? So I think that's what we get with, with FY Allen. And I think they lean into like, this is so ridiculous, right? They lean into that (laughs) and just, it, again, it's a really fun watch, and and uh, I highly recommend if you guys haven't seen first two seasons to go watch. I'm also curious what guys Katie might get along with and might kind of gravitate towards too. Looking at this mm-hmm. picture right now, mm-hmm. of course, we see a lot of buff guys <laughs> shirtless on the beach. So it might she might not have a tough time liking anybody. Um, don't know specifically yeah. maybe who she might have her eye on. I don't really know her type. I feel like she just kind of goes with mm-hmm. anyone that ha- can follow her banter, knows her personality, her humor. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's going to be mm-hmm. an interesting watch as well. Who do you think kind of will yeah. catch her eye? Kayla? Yeah, I mean, think? I think that's the that's the thing about Katie is interesting is like 
one, and it's no shade, but she is a little older. And, you know, F Boy Island is kind of the, the norm is guys are like 24, 25. Like they're pretty young. More of them are, are young than they're, they're around 30. So um, I'm interested to see who she'll actually connect with. Because, yes, it's like a fun show and it's less serious. But you do have like time where you have chats, you connect with people, you go on dates. So um, I, I don't know. I don't really just just from a glance, I don't see who could be her type. They all just look like gym <laughs> bros right now. Yes. And I don't really feel like that's Katie's type. But uh, I think that'll be fascinating to see. Like, it'll probably be like two or three guys that she really gets into who are kind of bright spots of the rest of them. Um, mm-hmm. And it'll be fascinating to see if she builds like a serious connection. And she has a wide range to pick from. So that that's something we also got to stay tuned yeah. for. Last up in a new interview with Extra, Charity Lawson said she will be putting her wedding on hold during Dancing with the Stars. She laughed when she was asked if she was practicing for her big day. They've had two rehearsals so far, and Artem said she is a patient learner. Now, when it was asked if she was planning her wedding at the moment, she said, quote, oh, God, no, no, that would be a nightmare, (laughs) end quote. She is focusing on the Dancing with the Stars competition, transition from Bachelorette, celebrating an engagement. She is just focusing on her current competition. She just wants to ride the wave. I am not surprised by this because Dancing with the Stars, physically and mentally, it takes a toll on you. So imagine planning a wedding on top of that. That's not going to happen. So I wasn't surprised when I heard this. I also agree that she just needs to take it a day at a time. She has so much that she just came off of when it came from bachelorette, engagement, being launched into the public eye with her man now and now on Dancing with the Stars. So it's a lot. So I hope she's staying also current and, you know, present at the same time and really focusing on the competition because that really takes a lot of your headspace up. So the wedding is the last thing that she should be worried about right now. One thousand percent. I mean, I think the wedding was going to be something that like the quote of her putting her wedding plans on hold. I'm sure that's not really the case. She probably was always going to have her wedding down the line anyway, because her and Dotton really just met. So they need more time together. Um, But man, I mean, when I sit and think about it, Charity has had a year like she has had the most impactful year anyone can have. I mean, she was on (laughs) Zach's season of The Bachelor that she filmed probably around this time in 2022. Then she became The Bachelorette, filmed that in the spring. Then she you know, she's been carrying that through the summer, been promoting that. And now she's going on. She's engaged to someone. And now she's going on Dancing with the Stars, which is a huge, huge undertaking. So I am just praying for her that she gets her rest and relaxation (laughs) amongst, you know, dance rehearsals and learning everything. But Artem is amazing. Um, He's obviously won before with Caitlin, another bachelorette. So he's, you know, no stranger to working with, you know, bachelorettes that he knows the franchise, all that good stuff. But yeah, I think Charity is such a sweet, she's such a sweet girl. She's really humble. So she's going to be such a great um, student. And I think she's going to do well with her cheerleading background. So um, yeah, I'm excited for her. I'm excited to see when the season starts, how good she does on premiere night. I'm expecting a lot. I have high expectations for her. I'm not going to lie. (laughs) I feel like she's going to be one of those ones that maybe makes it to the to the top three that's what I'm predicting because she does have that cheerleading yeah. background she does have Artem by her side and she seems like also they said Artem from his own words she's very patient and I think that's what you need mm-hmm. a lot in this competition is patience you're not too hard on yourself you're taking your time you're not overthinking so again very different from cheerleading of course but she has I guess some of that framework and that reference Uh, So I have high hopes for her and hopefully, yes, she does make it far. And who knows, maybe follows in Caitlin Bristow's footsteps and wins. No pressure. 
but uh, yeah. hopefully she does make it far. I'm going to say top three. That's my prediction. All right, everyone. Those are all the Bachelor Nation headlines we have for you guys today. Let us know what your guys' reactions are to all these new seasons that will be premiering very soon. But before you go, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on any news updates. Once again, I'm your host, Hiba Berry, joined today by Kayla Thompson. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.